Hello, perfectionists. Now, before we get into today's episode, I thought it was important to address recent events. My workplace has been in the news in the last week or two for many reasons. And I took it upon myself to prepare a written statement that I will just read aloud right now. <clears throat> Hello, world. First of all, good morning. Squirt! <laughs> I bet you're wondering how I ended up in this situation. Yep, that's me. Somehow tangentially involved in a trending scandal at my workplace. It's also crazy. Everything that's been going on. Global warming. Geopolitics. My boss losing focus. Firstly, I wanted to say that I'm a guy that works at a company. A company full of wonderful people that I cherish. That are creative and lovely. People that I consider co-workers. I'm not going to speak candidly about the situation because it involves real people and their personal lives. And while spilling tea can be fun, if you steep tea too long, it starts to taste yucky. So all I can say is this, I'm psyched to work for the new trifecta of Try Guys, and I think the company will be much better off for the ways in which we're refocusing on what's important to us. Good night, good luck, and God bless America. Please enjoy this episode of Perfect Person. Welcome to Perfect Person, the podcast where I'm perfect and I'm going to teach you how. I'm Miles Bonson, your intrepid host extraordinaire. And this week, I sort of took all of the batteries that were loose in our house and I combined them, compiled them into one little basket. So now when we need batteries, it's like, well, I know exactly where they are. I don't even have to think. I don't even have to wonder. I hate to do this, but I've made that battery basket. Well, so you did <laughs> okay, You did that a long I'm time so ago. I'm sorry to destroy no, 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 no. I did it so long ago. You did do it a long time ago, but then we had several, and there was also some in that hardware drawer. So then I went right, in no, and I thought, yeah, you did, you laid, laid the legwork. I, yeah. But like they say, behind every perfect person <laughs> right. is, a, is a woman who's a woman who's shaking doing her it head. all. Yeah, who's doing it who's, all. Yeah. And as you can hear, I'm joined by freelance co host of the week, my lovely wife, Sarah. Hello. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, also, <laughs> just from the start, <laughs> we did agree that if I took your last name, yeah, you know, not that you you ever asked me, you absolutely did not ask me. Oh yeah, we have a couple. I, you've you've you expressed just, that you want to air several grievances no, before we grievances. get started. This. I know, I have, I know, no, I know at least grievances. three that you were like, well, I know that I want to sort of no, clear the air no, no, about these several no, things. All right, no, as a feminist, I was like, I can't believe I'm taking. My husband's last name is already seems yeah, so sure. embarrassing to mm -hmm. say husband, you know, mm -hmm. in some ways. But <laughs> <laughs> like we covered in the other episode, it's cringe to be married. It, it's cringe to be married, right? So when I said I'm going to take your last name, mm -hmm. but I would like it to be Bonsignore. Yep, because I so, think it sounds better. Because I always is, wanted to be Italian, you know. Mm -hmm. And he keeps saying Bonsignore, and it's true. And I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought this up because. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Miles Bonsignore, yes. right? That's the name. Yeah. That's the name. It's the Italian version Unless of the name. Unless you're in France. Unless you're in France, which would be a Bonsignore. No. But <laughs> uh, it is bon always been Bonsignore. Bon it's always been Bonsignore. Yeah. Except for in America, right. we say Bonsignore because it's easier for people to know how to spell Bonsignore. Sure, but I, hey, I think you can do it. Well, and so, I, and so it wasn't until I met you that you were like, you should say it how it's pronounced. So I'm in, trapped in between these two worlds. One world <laughs> one world where I'm saying my name the way I've said it my entire life, Bonsignore. Yeah. And the other is saying it the way it should be pronounced and the way that you requested that it's our I last name. I think it sounds so romantic. It like is romantic. You know, if I'm going to change my last name, then it better be a whole character. You right, know? So, I better be Sarah Bonsignore. <laughs> Sarah Bonsignore. <laughs> yeah, 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 you it's, know? Yeah. I was Sarah Peterson, which is like, great. It's just like the girl next to you in math class. Right. Which is nothing wrong. I love my- There's a lot of them, Sarah Peterson. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, I just yeah. was like, there's murderers with the last name. There's, mm. you know, Jordan Peterson. I just thought- Yeah. <laughs> not, not a good- 
Not a good last name. But you want to smell olive oil when you say her name. Yes, correct. <laughs> and I'm the most Scandinavian, boring ever. So obviously, yeah, yeah I'm appropriating your Italian um, mm -hmm. heritage. That, and know. as my wife, you yeah. sort of, um, you, this is one, I would say three grievances you wanted to bring up on the show. <laughs> and you had requested, three? you had three. The other one was about my advice two weeks ago. Oh my God. And I want I want a chance to defend myself. <laughs> okay, sure. But let me get into it. Yeah. I was in the car listening to the podcast. Yeah. And Miles goes, Oh, you don't have that much money and you just graduate you're just graduating college. Get a credit card. No, and I thought I thought in the car I audibly went, Oh my God, no, don't do it. Uh, Miles is I will say is is very responsible and good with his money. And it's part of what makes us a great team because I am not. Um and I it's not that I I don't know how to be. I'm not like an idiot, you know, I, it's just, but I'm a fun person. Okay. Sorry. So when I got a credit card in college, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. I was like, go to Neiman Marcus. I was like, I'm <laughs> getting a dress. I was like, going out. I was like, I got it. I like some people, Miles, I had like, I had like $10,000 in debt in like, I don't know, four months or something crazy. I don't know. That's insane. Or like me. maybe a year. And, and it was, and of course, mm -hmm. I was just like, it was, it was torture. And I tried paying it off and yeah, my mom eventually bailed me out and I had to pay her back. And then my mom bailed me out again. It's just like credit cards are so scary to me even now because I love just, just spending money. I know you love to spend money. And, and that's one of the things I love about you because <laughs> not that we don't, we don't have a lot of money, No, but we really enjoy nice little fancy things. Yeah. I which love Which means fancy that sometimes things. we're just eating like Trader Joe's frozen, whatever for, you know, days of time. And then we're like getting something lavish, like a fancy <laughs> olive oil or a, a nice little tinned fish I've, that's like too yeah. expensive to even really realize. But I want to clarify my credit card advice. I know. I'm just saying for kids out there or when you're in college, mm -hmm. be very careful because if you're anything like me, yeah. you're just going to be like, um, this whole dinner, it's on me, gals. Yeah, no. <laughs> I got a credit card, baby. <laughs> I got six, okay? Yeah, I got six. Here's the thing about the credit card. Uh -huh. I realize that I'm not, not that I'm not like other girls, but <laughs> I am. <laughs> you, you do love a little fancy thing. I'm not like other girls, <laughs> but I do. My plan with the credit card was always just like, I'm not really spending money on this unless I like absolutely unbelievably have to oh my God, for no. big purchases, which I get is like that requires a, a restraint and a level of self-control that many young 18 to 23 somethings don't possess. Or people in their thirties. Or people in their thirties yeah. like you. Which, sure. um, but, but that is one of the things I love about you. You love to, you love to, enjoy a lavish treat, uh, even if it is- See that, ladies? He yeah. lets me spend, I feel like a walking stereotype on platforms. Yeah, it platforms. is funny. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a credit card, sorry. Uh, no, it's humiliating for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. But what can I say? I want to issue a correction here. Credit cards- yeah. Uh, enter with caution. Maybe don't yeah. get one. That's my correction of the- uh, correction Thank of the you. Because perfect people make mistakes. And we've always right. said that. <laughs> well, now- Sarah, um, yeah. you're obviously my sweet, lovely pregnant wife. Yeah. We got a baby on the way. Oh boy. Yeah. That's kind of wild. Um, yeah. uh, what's on your mind lately? What's sort of like, what, what, what <sighs> this week, what is the energy that you're bringing into the advice that you're going to be giving? What is um, qualifying you this week? Maybe what's, definitely. what's the fire that's lit into your engine that's going to be serving the advice to the people this okay, week? Okay. Well, I would like to say I am so pregnant. I broke a toilet seat yesterday. <laughs> You yeah, did. I did. I broke and the you fucking at toilet seat. Okay. <laughs> it is, it was a crushing moment. Miles handled yeah. it with grace. He you was looked in, at me like a, like a, like a scared puppy. <laughs> you sat on the toilet seat and, and it I cracked. Fucking cracked. It cracked and moved oh, to the yeah, side and you I went, oh, I broke the toilet seat. I did. I broke it. I broke it. And yeah. This is also five days after the doctor said I had gained too much weight. <laughs> That's whatever. Doctors I know, don't know it's anything. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just because yeah. like, you know, who knows? Like, We've said this before, but we're better than doctors on the show. Yeah, right. I'm better right. than a doctor. I think it's I like the more. risk of the baby getting too big. Fuck you. I was just like, yeah. I thought my whole life, Whatever, we don't need to discuss it. I'm fine. I just was mad. The toilet seat. And then I was broke funny, the though. toilet seat. Yeah, that yeah. was a funny moment that we both experienced. And yeah, we got to enjoy it together. Yeah. So. Um. Well, uh, Sarah, the people are calling in, and they need advice. 
Okay. Um, and before we get to it, yeah. I just like to say, if you're liking the show, please, the most helpful thing you can do is tell a friend about it. Yeah. You can like, you can subscribe, you can sc- also, if you want to call in, we have a perfect person podcast, um, Instagram account. It's at perfect person pod. <laughs> and that's where I, uh, post the recording schedule. So yeah. if you want to call in, follow that thing, and then you can call in live when I post the recording times. You just said it like this. I don't know. I think it's like um, at like perfect person pod. I, I don't know, something coy. like that. Let me take it again. Let me take it again. <laughs> no, no, and I liked it like that. Yeah, I guess it's like, I'm like not sure what it is, but I think it's perfect person pod. I'm like yeah, discovering it, it as yeah, I go. Yeah, yeah. I'm like um, acting like I, <laughs> yeah, this is it's like, like. It's like not a big deal to me or anything. Yeah, um, I brought a lasagna to the potluck and I'm like, I think the lasagna is <laughs> pretty good, but it, I don't know. Yeah, it looks pretty good with a cheese on it. Don't and, talk about lasagna because I want it right now. I know, don't, you are. I am hungry. I'm starving, Miles. Well, let's answer answer some calls here, Sarah, okay, great. because uh, the people need help. I And let me tell you, I, I just was thinking about it this week. I have made so many mistakes. <laughs> I, I just like that credit card. I just like, I look at like all the mistakes I made in my twenties and, and I'm like, oh my God, how did you get through it? <laughs> so I, I would like to talk to my younger self and give her advice, but I'll, I'll instead give it to everyone else. Yes. I think that's yeah. wise. Yeah. Um, all right here. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person. I'm here with my lovely wife, Sarah, the love squad. And um, what do you call? Hello. Hello. What's your name and where you're calling from? Oh, my name is Darius and I'm calling from New York. New York. Awesome, Darius. Thanks for calling in. And what's the problem that you need us to solve flawlessly today? So here it is. So about a year back, I had a little party at a friend's house. Okay. And during this party, one of my acquaintances, not really a close friend, but a friend of the friend that was having the party, they decided to, (laughs) after a few drinks, get a little frisky on the couch. Okay. In front of me and somebody else. Okay. Very uncomfortable situation for everybody involved. How Um, frisky? How frisky is frisky? How frisky is frisky? You know, they had to, you know, pull the covers over frisky. Over the like, like yeah. okay, over the jeans, over the jeans, or under the jeans. I'm pretty sure there's some under the jeans action. Oh it my! Was, it oh. was about three a.m. and I think they thought we were sleeping, but me oh. and my other friend, yeah. were like talking a few feet away. Oh, God. oh. they were really in it. Oh no! Yeah, really bad, really bad. Yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> what I did. In that situation, when I felt really uncomfortable, I told the person who was hosting the party, I said, hey, like, yeah, something's going on for sure down there and everything. Yeah. And since he was closer to them, I guess he didn't want to make the situation awkward. They stopped at the point where I told him. So they were over with, but I wanted him to address it to be like, hey, why did you guys do that? Yeah. He ended up not addressing it that night, but told me he would address it. Got it. Then it comes up recently and the people are mad at me. I'm the bad guy in this situation. So I want to know. Yeah. How should I approach the person who had the party and say like, hey, what the fuck? (laughs) Okay. Yeah. First of all, just want to affirm you're absolutely not the villain. The people like under the jeans canoodling at a party in (laughs) public. Those are the people in the wrong. First of all, that's so weird. And I do, like if I knew people that were doing that, I would like probably not. Well, they thought be you were. S- all right, wait. Can I just repeat what I yeah, think go is it. going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, or or let me just make sure I know what was going on. Okay, you guys were at a party. It's three a.m. So you and another friend, and then we're downstairs. Right. And then there's this couple on the couch. And are there anyone else downstairs with you guys? No, not at the moment. It was okay. me and my other friend on a couch towards the back of the um the living room uh-huh. and then they were on a couch facing the TV. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. So you guys are down there. You're like, oh gross, they're having sex. Um, I'm gonna go tell the house party person yeah. to be like, hey, your friends are having sex and it's kind of weird. And they're like, oh God, I feel awkward. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna address this. Yeah. Then a year goes by and they that person told the couple that you told them that you saw them having sex and you were uncomfortable with it. They told other people at the party that I brought it up to them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, hey, this is the risk you take when you have public sex. Yeah. People when you're are going to talk about it. <laughs> like, course, by the way, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, of what course. are they complaining about? Like, that's like, yeah. I mean, like, 
hey, they're not the worst people in the world. Maybe they thought no one knew and they were like being secretive, weird of them, but like yeah. whatever. But like then for them to be like, hey, it was weird that people felt weird. That's weird. So I'm sorry. So you just wanted to talk to the house, the owner of the house party and be like, what do you want him to do or her or them? What do you want them to do? I just want to ask them really what they said to other people that made it seem that I was the bad guy in the situation. Yeah. That I was the villain. I would just like ask the person who hosted the party, like, Hey, I'm like, I'm confused. What did you say to those people? Cause like, I wasn't like, I thought what they were doing is kind of weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that you need to be on the defensive at all. Almost. Yeah. They were having public, they're having public sex and you like told people about it. Cause it was weird. Like, that's not like a private detail. It's not like you walked into the room that they were staying in privately. I'm like, yeah, exposed. that would be weird. That would be weird. If you went into their hotel room yeah. and you're like, yeah. um, they're having sex. That's like, two, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's like two people like walking up to it in front of a stranger. And then like, they start hooking up and they're like, you're such a peeping Tom for like looking at us. <laughs> in front of you like yeah, don't how look rude. at me that's don't gross. look at us hey don't look at me don't look don't look but look <laughs> yeah like that's they clearly were doing something that they shouldn't have been but um yeah i would just like yeah. don't act defensive and i think also like drama like this in a group just will spread like wildfire if you give it any credence yeah so i, I would just go and just be like oh mm -hmm. hey like i'm i'm confused like i just saw what they were doing and so i just decided to bring it up because like yeah. i don't know it's kind of weird for me like i don't think that you need to be like they the were the fuck? ones in the wrong yeah. and like, you know, like don't instigate it even further. And I think by doing that, you just kind of got to go into it real chill. Like. Yeah. Super chill. Chill oh. as hell. <laughs> real chill. I think, real I think chill. just go into it and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey guys, I, I, yeah. this happened a year ago, first of all, but like, I think we're all confused and like, I, I just want to make sure that I know what happened. Yeah. But yeah, like I think going into it being like, people get defensive. Right. You know, if you're like, hey, you were the one like, you know, like, even if you have all the right to do that, I think just people get defensive. So I think yeah. it's a good option to be like, Hey, I'm just curious, like what could, what happened? And, and how would, how do you think I should have handled that? Right. Yeah. What do you think I should have just sort of okay. just yeah. sat there and sat there and listened. watched you guys bone? Like I'm I good. also <laughs> in college, I heard, okay. Oh no. So I was living, I was living alone. I was 18. I was living in this apartment and I was woken up by these sounds. Oh, and I was like, oh my God, I was so horrified. And obviously I was pretty inexperienced because I called 911. Um, <laughs> no way, Sarah. Oh it sounded like someone was being as, like Wait, you were in your house alone? Yeah, but there was like an echoey, it was like in North Hollywood, it was like an echoey apartment. Oh. And it wasn't in my house, it was in the apartment next to me. And I was like, I think this woman's getting murdered. So I called 911 and I was like, I'm really concerned this woman's screaming. Um, I just was that inexperienced that I didn't know oh what sex really sounded God. like. So I called, and then the cops, it was like this whole thing because- Did I, the cops question you? And they were like, what did you hear, ma'am? And you're like, I, was, I heard something so crazy outside. <laughs> no, I was like, I think this woman is being attacked in the apartment next to me. And they were like- And they were like, oh, she's being attacked, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then like, I don't, I think the cops came and then it was like this whole thing, but- Anyways, I- Wow, and you cock blocked with, you cop blocked. <laughs> I cop blocked. You yeah. cop blocked. But anyways, I, I think I've cock always- Cock blocked by 911. <laughs> cock blocked by emergency <laughs> services. Okay, I was alarmed, okay? I was alarmed. I was alarmed. It's alarming if you hear it once. And then in others, I've just had another time- Did they tell you what was going no, on? No, I've never even seen these people. I never saw them in my life. They the cops just, didn't come to your door. They, they weren't yeah, like- Yeah, no, no. I just, I did my citizen yeah. duty. Yeah. Um, Citizens arrest. These two people are fucking next yeah. door. And then, and then another experience in North Hollywood grass. I hate North Hollywood. Sorry. Yeah. Um, another experience living in an apartment building around that age, maybe like a year later, I kept getting woken up by this woman that I was like, is she haunted? She was like, Oh, oh, it sounded oh. like <laughs> she was moaning. Yes. I was like, is there a ghost? Oh. Like, whoa. I was like, oh my God, I'm so terrified by this. And like, I was just like, this woman is doing these ghost impersonations. Like I was just, but then I finally got it. Cause at the end I would hear, Ugh! and I was like, ah, ah. Oh. It was like, so it was like, but then it kept, then it was a problem. Oh, and then I was no. like, how do I write this woman a letter? Cause I couldn't yeah. figure out what apartment building was. So anyways, I've been traumatized. And then I had one roommate around a year later. It was just my early 18, yeah. 19, 20. I, I had a roommate and I, 
some people don't care if they hear their roommates having sex. Some people don't care. Uh, some people really don't care. Yeah, we. Yeah. I don't know why. I can't. I, uh, I, I I don't like it because I'm like, oh, that's my friend. I think hearing it is is definitely is definitely different because once you start hearing it, you start to visualize it in your head. Yeah, and, and like, you oh, actually no, saw I don't, it. I don't want to be thinking about them having sex yeah, right no. now. I don't know why. Maybe, Maybe yeah. we are Puritans. I don't know, but you actually had to see it. So that's a whole other dimension. I was just giving you credence of being like, yeah. is credence the right word? Credence is the right word. Um, you were just giving him credence clear water. <laughs> I was just saying like, <laughs> like that. I would be like, oh my God. But I would probably like, yeah, I don't know. But I do, yeah, I think it's, you're doing the right, you did totally the right thing, but I think the way to approach, like, it seems like the drama is like festering, like a disease and all you, you just have to mm-hmm. go into it chill and not play into it by being like, yeah. well, they were the one having sex. Like yeah. just, you know what I mean? Just go and be like, yeah, like they were having sex and I just felt like it was kind of weird. So I brought it up. I'm not trying to like be a shit starter, you know? Like yeah, I no. think, that, and if they're yeah. like, well, you shouldn't have said it and be like, oh yeah, I guess not. Like, sorry, I, you know, I'm just, I, I just kept, thought it was a little bit weird that you guys were doing it in front of me, but you know, for sure, maybe you were drunk. Like, I think just sure try to be, I'm sure they're embarrassed too. Cause it's like, yeah. oh, what do you mean? Like he was, wa-, you know, but they're, that's their own weird issue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, I would be totally mortified. Yeah. yeah. Um, because yeah, that's, that's, that's really weird. But good luck. It's going to yeah, be fine. Definitely. You know what? Like sometimes when I have a problem that I'm freaking out about it, yeah. I'm like, well, any, will anyone or me care in five years? No, I have a story. And I'm, I'm really, it's, it's a little embarrassing and it's a little salacious. Oh, no. Is it okay if I tell it? Oh, I'm excited. Okay, no, 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 it's not about you. You think I'm going to tell a story about like sex? That uh, you're I my mean, wife. You're carrying my child. Hey, I how have fucked s- up would that be? I'm like, yeah, this sex story about me. And my I'll pregnant. tell a sex stories about you. No, please don't. Honestly, so, I'll tell it right now. I don't so care. When I was in high school, I uh, I was at this party. I think it was a graduation party. My graduation party. Uh-huh. And um, I was getting intimate. And uh-huh. we're in the back who of my. Who is she? We're, who is this? Old? Yeah, who's no. this bitch? Love, a classmate of mine, okay, a lovely sure, person, sure, whatever. whatever. We were um, hooking up in my car and in, in the back part of it. Uh-huh. And um, I had a Volvo at this time, and uh-huh. the trunk was not latched properly. So when the car would get jostled, the light would turn on. Ew. And so. Oh, little yeah, did, like a light show. Like little did I know, like it, my car, cars were parked in a field. Little did I know, friends were like at the other end of the field, uh, not watching us have sex because they were far enough away that they couldn't see, but they could just see the light turning on and they were just all laughing, uh, seeing the light ew, turn, ew. like the light flicker <laughs> like that. And I found out like months later and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? How like, was your rhythm? Why would, really good, dude. <laughs> no, I was like, why was everybody watching the car? Like uh, I was mortified. Okay, I have not- but I guess oh. my own damn fault. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell a story about me <laughs> having sex because you told a story about you having sex. This is so sick, this yeah. is just how it goes. Okay, equality. Okay. Love yeah, that. equality. That's this is right. A, this Women's is rights. feminism. <laughs> this is uplifting female mm-hmm. creators. Go. Okay, so I was living in Brentwood. I don't know why I need to tell. And I was seeing. I met, like I um went to my high school reunion, and I like yeah. this guy that like whatever. <laughs> Sometimes you go to a high school reunion and you like rekindle something that of never course. was there in high school. No, 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 no. But um, it was like the weird nerd is all of a sudden buff and hot as hell. No, <laughs> it was mostly that everyone I I realized kind of didn't like me and and at like my senior year. What? That's devastating. No, well, I, when I came back and they were like, Sarah, you're the most changed. You're so great. And I was like, I'm always been like this. What the fuck? I've always <laughs> so, been great. No, you guys yeah. just didn't see it. But they were. Based, I knew they didn't like me in high school. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Anyways. Yeah. So this guy that I think thought I was annoying in high school was like, oh, you know, maybe, yeah. you know. So we went on a date and we were hooking up, but like, I don't know why I didn't want, I didn't want to have him in my apartment. Maybe my roommate was there. Yeah. Who knows? Whatever. There was a park next to the apartment building. Oh like my a, God. Like a parking. And so we were like <sighs> hooking up and I don't know, maybe a shirt came up, whatever. We were hooking in up. In the park or in a car in the park? Oh, in a car. Not like just in the park. Oh, the park it was like bench. a night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was like a nice neighborhood, right? And so we were in the park. And You're we, in, the, in a nice neighborhood in Brentwood. Yeah, it was a yeah. very fancy neighborhood. Sure. Yeah, and I'm a little, whatever, gross, okay? Yeah. I So we're in the car. Mm-hmm. We're getting, and then I couldn't believe it. A cop comes and we hear the woo <laughs> and like, And I was like, oh, oh no. my God, right? So I'm like mortified. I'm like trying to get on my shirt. As back, I, we're like in the back. I, we're in the back seat. I'm trying to get on my shirt. I'm like 28, by the way. So this is when you're 28. I was 28. I <laughs> oh was not my a god, kid. Sarah! Sarah, this happened to me when I was 16. Well, the I same was 28. Story. Okay, and some of us grow at different speeds. Okay, 
And um, I, I can't was a, believe a you were late, 28. You were only. I was 28 so recently, by the way. Yeah, well, we you were my age. Lives. You were my age doing <laughs> yes. doing what I was doing when I was 16. What can I say? I'm wild. Okay? Yeah, you're wild. I am a late bloomer. That's damn right. Um, That's my give wife. it up. Give it up for the late bloomers. This is the woman who's carrying my child. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> guys, um, this this is one of the crazy stories. So. Yeah. We're hugging, whatever. And we hear like, you know, please, whatever, like, you know. <laughs> freeze, everybody freeze, freeze, Something like that, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And so then, so then the guy is coming towards our car, right? And he was like, um, can you, and he was about like asking for this guy's like, um, like, you know, information. License, yeah. And the car, the cop car comes he didn't put it in park <gasps> and it pressed the cop yeah. against our car. Oh my God. I, I can't know. believe you haven't told me this story before. <laughs> this is a great, incredible I I story. I thought I had. So I'm dying. He was fine, by is the way. He okay? he That's how people die. I know he was fine. He was fine. But he was like, um, oh, he, was so he, was, he was like, can uh, one of you please get out of the car and put my car into park? <laughs> I can't believe this. And of course, all I'm selfishly thinking, I was like, oh God, we're not going to get a ticket now. Thank God. <laughs> um, like, can so, one of you, can, hi, can one of you please put my like, car into park? park yeah. I'm being crushed to death, but if you can please. So I'm like, I don't have a top on, by the way. I'm like, oh, in the back seat with like covering my tits. And then like, so then he gets out of the car. He's like, yeah, of course, of course. He was really lo a lovely guy. I think he has a kid now. Yeah, sure. Um, and I ended up- Shout out. Friend of the show. What's his name? No, we can't say his name, but um, I mean, we could, but I, yeah. I honestly, I, I kind of ghosted him in the end and I feel really shitty about it, but that's another story. After um, this wild story. No, I was just not ready. He was yeah. really great and lovely and maybe I could have ended up with him. Let's I don't call, know. Let's call him. Yeah, let's call him. <laughs> But so he gets out of the car. He puts the car into park. I'm like awkwardly like, oh my God, sitting there. The guy's sitting there. I was standing there, right? <laughs> then he puts it into park. And then the guy, I mean, told me that the cop was like, okay, can I have your information? And- um, He should have been like, are you serious? Yeah. The other, the other guy was like, I, I don't think that's necessary. Like I, he actually held it up. And then- we both drove away. Oh my God. <laughs> that cop must have been so embarrassed. Like I think he couldn't have given us a ticket because then we would have been like in the courtroom telling this horrifying story. Yeah, he fucking story. didn't put his car in park. park. Yeah. That is so <laughs> unbelievably funny too. Also for him to be like, can I have your information? And you're, you're the guy you're working up with is just like, yeah, you're not going to be needing that. Yeah, I You've would, embarrassed yourself I enough I would have take. panicked and probably given it. But yeah, like, right. I, you know, I was just like, I couldn't- I, how did I, how did I not marry that person after that story? It would have been a great story. Okay, easy. <laughs> this guy is insane, so, actually. You would actually really like him. I'm sure I would. Yeah, I like a lot of the people that you've hooked up with. And you know, it's so annoying of you. You are not, you don't have I a know. jealous bone in your body. Sarah does, it is, there is a funny thing where like, we'll meet people that from her past that uh, she's, you know, hooked up with or dated or whatever. And I'm always leaving. I'm just like, man, that guy was super nice. And Sarah's just like, oh, couldn't you just be <laughs> jealous? <laughs> not any, n nothing jealous, nothing. You just are so confident in yourself. He's like, I, I got her locked down forever. That's, that's true. Damn right. That's true. No, that's I true. knocked her up, man. <laughs> 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 knocked up my girl. Yeah, that's gross. Anyway, well, thank you so much for calling in. I can't believe there was a world where Sarah didn't tell that story <laughs> on the show. And I'm so glad that we got it. Um, but yeah, I think just don't feed into the drama and um, you're going to be fine. And you know, always, you can always, thank you. Next time, maybe just just go, um, yeah. um, man, yeah. I need a soda. Yeah, like just if you see something, make say myself something. Known. Yeah, yeah, make yeah. yourself known. Oh, you know what's weird is when people are hooking up in front of you. Yeah. Maybe you could do do you guys want to watch Blossed, actually? Uh, just yeah. ask them questions. Yeah, as a yeah, yeah. Let's put on the big Lebowski. <laughs> 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 Um, but anyway, right. thank Have you so much. Yeah, thanks for calling in. You have a good one. Thank you so much. And congratulations to both of you. More congratulations to Sarah. Uh, but congratulations thanks, thanks to both so of you. Much. I'm so happy you guys are embracing the cringiness of parenthood. And I'm so excited <laughs> thank to watch you, you guys. It's so embarrassing. Oh, that's very but, straight you know, of you. Have whatever, a great procreation. One. Yeah, we're having the baby. <laughs> thank you. And I appreciate you saying that. We'll talk <laughs> to you later. You have so a good much. one. Have a great day. Bye. Too, All right, bye bye. bye. That was so funny. I can't believe I haven't heard that story before. I swear 
sure I've told you that story. Sarah, that's the funniest story. I have not heard that story. <laughs> it is, I swear I've told you the story. It was like Super Troopers. It is exactly Arena 911. Which too. by the way, can I tell you this? When I was getting my license, yeah. um, I didn't tell anyone the day of my test yeah. because I was so nervous I was going to fail. Why yeah. would you tell people the day you're going to get it, right? Mm -hmm. And in the waiting room, mm -hmm. you know, before you take the test, they're playing Stupid Troopers. Stupid Troopers? Whatever. What is it? Super, super Troopers. Super Troopers. They're yeah. playing that. Oh. oh, that's super funny. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I love that. And then um, I ran a stop sign in my test. And, and I was you like, still passed? I was like, did I just fail? And he was like, no. Wow. That's pretty privilege right there. And you know what? Thank fucking. I was, yeah, I was smoking. That's pretty I was privilege. smoking. I'll say, I was smoking all of it. I peaked at 16. Yeah. I did. I did. Wow. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, my love. Well, people are still calling in and they still need advice. Are you ready for another call? I'm ready. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person. You're on with Miles and Sarah, the love squad. <laughs> oh my word. Hello. Um, my name's Charu. Jadu, where, uh, what's your uh, problem you're calling about today? So coming up next weekend is the anniversary of my friend's death. Okay, gotcha. And I don't really know how to deal with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, absolutely. You called the right person because I am sort of the de facto expert on grief, not to brag. I've heard. <laughs> I know. It's a title that I've earned, but uh, not a title that I love that I've earned necessarily. But uh, a, kind of a big part of my life. Well, tell me about your friend a little bit. Well, um, his name was Trey. And he was an incredible person mm -hmm. who just loved life. He was going to be in the Navy. He was going to enlist last year, and he was super excited for that. He had just graduated high school. So it was just an incredible guy. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I think that, like... With this type of stuff, it's always hard. I think there's also a lot of, there's a lot of uh, like societal expectation of what grief is supposed to look like. And I find that especially like, like movies and TV shows are kind of, I mean, it also like, look, everyone's at the, a different place with grief and there's all types of different types of grief. But I find that for me, like there's two types of grief. There's like grief at a funeral and then there's grief at the party after the funeral. And I kind of put them into two different camps because it's like grief at a funeral. It's obviously, it's clear cut. It's sad. You miss this person. It's a little bit, it's like sort of sorrowful. Grief at the party after the funeral is to me the things where you get to share like your favorite things about this person, your least favorite things about this person, teasing them, being like, oh my gosh, they used to do this one thing that was driving me crazy. You get to share sort of like fun, embarrassing stories that show how intimate of, an, of a connection that you had with this person. So like for me, my friend Marnie passed away and she, uh, this was during the pandemic, you know, my one of my best friends in the world, right? So sweet and wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we had this Zoom funeral and everyone's sharing these stories about her. And I was like, and I shared this story and I, I was just like, you know, it's just this sort of clear cut thing. And I was like, man, but I, I wasn't in person because it was during the pandemic, but I was like, the story I really wanted to share was like my friend Marnie, uh, <laughs> she hooked, she was sick for a while and she hooked up with one of her nurses at the, at the hospital. <laughs> And I was like, that's the, de like, that's the detail that I want to share. That's like, that's the intimate connection about, I feel about my friend is like this story. That's like a little bit salacious. It's like sort of about this person. It's almost a little embarrassing for her, but it's like this wonderful thing. So I find that if you can get around people that knew your friend and you can share stories like that, that are not necessarily just like of course we miss this person. Of course we miss their personality. But if you can share stuff that is impactful and meaningful to you that shows your intimate connection, I find that that's generally the most helpful thing. Yeah, thank you. That's wonderful advice. Oh, yeah. I really uh, appreciate it. Of course. And I think it's also like friends. Uh, how old are you? I'm 18. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hear you lost your friend. I lost uh, my brother when I was 17. And I find that uh, your friends probably, uh, your friends, maybe your friends knew uh, you, this other friend as well, but friends do, who, especially at 18, do not know how to deal with you. And that, that is like, no, another, not really. of course, right? Because it's like, <laughs> you're sort of now, you've experienced this loss, you've experienced this feeling that a lot of people just don't, Sometimes people don't get until their 30s or, or, or their 40s even. Like just that experience of intense loss that's like a too soon thing. And, you know, I find that your parent, friends are not really going to get it and they're not going to know how to help you. 
And so unfortunately for you, but kind of fortunately, you get to tell your friends how to help you. And you get to be like, hey, look, I just want to like go get a smoothie. Like we, I know that like, I just need you to kind of be around me and whatever you need, you just kind of have to tell them that. Cause I found that at that point, the thing that frustrated me was like, some of my friends just really didn't know how to deal with it. And then they would just kind of like turn off or feel awkward around me. And I was just like, I'm not yeah. like, it's not like I don't have poison ivy. Yeah. That, like just that, <laughs> that friend was me too. I didn't yeah. know. It wasn't until I met, you know, my friend Kendall and, yeah. and Miles and I dealt with grief, especially at a young age that mm-hmm. I was like, oh, we should ask about them right? and how these people are to keep, you know, keep them alive and, and talk about them. Because before mm-hmm. I was like, don't bring up that person. They died, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, cause I was right. traumatized. I was like, I don't want to yeah. bring up bad memories. But really mm-hmm. what I was told at least from you guys was, to ask questions about them, you know, to be like, I want to remember, you know? So, I mean, not everyone maybe feels that way, but it's as the friend that probably was really terrible for a long time. It was just like, let's avoid the conversation. You know, it was good to learn to engage in the conversation. Yeah. Right. And it's like, there's also, there's all types of different, I find also that I would often feel worried that I wasn't feeling exactly what I was supposed to at any given time. So I would give myself a hard time for being like, Mm -hmm. why am I not like weeping at every moment? And it's like, no, there's, there's levels to grief. There's all types of different grief. There's grief where you're laughing. There's grief where you're angry. There's grief where you're sad. There's like, there's just every different kind. And don't put too much pressure on yourself to try to do the perfect thing. Just do what feels right in the moment. And, uh, you know, talk to your friends, talk about your friend, and um, yeah, no, I'm sorry you're going through that, but uh, you're going to be okay. And I really appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Yeah. I've that really means a lot. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, thank you for telling us about Trey and you have a fantastic day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. And um, congratulations, by the way, on your baby. Oh, oh thank, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know. He We're was just sorry. kicking right now. I know. He's kicking. He's kicking <laughs> oh, all wow. the time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's yeah. kicking. So. <laughs> I know. It is wild. <laughs> Um, All right. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Bye. Bye. Wow. Yeah. That was wonderful. It's funny because I do, uh, I have a lot of advice for people, especially like kids who are 18, who are grieving. Yeah. But I don't always get to really give it because it's like, I have to sort of find specific people who are dealing with that. You should make a video or something about that. I think I'm gonna. Because like, I also like, I think there should be, I remember reading an article or something like that, like, how to help those have grieved. Yeah. And like, cause you want to be like, I relate and like, that's bad, you know, or like, mm-hmm. but then I, I remember recently, maybe you will have some advice for me, but <laughs> um, I, I, you know, just of like, that sucks. You oh, know? sure. Yeah. You know, and just like acknowledging that it sucks and that not everything's meant to be and there's no big reason behind it, you know, and yeah, just like know, yeah. things are painful and just to sit with you with that, you know. The, if anyone's out there and they're, they have a, you have a friend, because I think it's more common that people have friends that are grieving than yeah. that they're actually grieving just because it's like sudden weird things happen all the time. But I think that the advice is just like be there, be present. Don't, yeah. you don't have to have anything to say really too. And that's hard because like as someone who talks a lot. Yeah. Um, I want to fill the space. Sure. And um, not the time to fill the space. <laughs> <laughs> not about me. Hard to realize, but you know, just yeah. giving giving that space. But I think that it, that advice, Miles, will be helpful because guess what? Death is a big part of life. Oh whoa. my gosh! Whoa! Oh uh, whoa! That's <laughs> oh the soundboard. Hang on. Wait. <laughs> no, didn't know you go. Wait. Ah! Oh, that was terrifying. Ah! Oh. There we go. There's there you effect. go. Um. But uh, no, for sure. And I think it's just like, yeah, be present. Even if you're just like, let's get play video games. Let me, let me yeah. just sit here. Let me just sit here on my computer next yeah. to you. Uh, and then we could just sit here yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's just about not feeling so isolated. Like I think that yeah. that's really the thing that people should um, help their friends with. Um, because I, and that's, I, yeah, I said this in the other one, but I, I think that like my philosophy was always, I don't know what's going to happen. So I might as well just do the things exactly like I want to do. Like I'm not yeah. going to choose a safe career because there are no safe careers. I actually don't think that that's a thing, truly. Um, and I still don't like my friends who were like, yeah, I'm in a safe career, right. of, like working at a bank. It's like, well, the bank laid everybody off. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, right. so I'm always just like, well, yeah, do the exact thing that you want to do. Um, because that's going to be more fun for you. And also you don't know what's going to happen. There could yeah. be COVID. There could be an earthquake. There could be a fucking yeah. tornado. You really don't know. So just enjoy yourself. Anyway, the phone lines are ringing off the hook here. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person. You're on with Miles and Sarah, the love squad. <laughs> and what's your problem you're calling about today? Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't hi. think 
I we went through. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're here. You're here. Um, okay, so um, I'm getting married. Oh, wonderful. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and I'm having a little bit of trouble kind of narrowing down our guest list. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. So I have this. Yeah, I have this group of friends. Um, we haven't been friends for super long. Mm. Um, and it's kind of the debate of whether I want to, you know, invite these like, I don't know, like 10, 10 people to add on to our already like big kind of list. Okay, yeah. So when so there's a couple questions we have to clarify here. We, Sarah and I did this. Okay. We made a guest list for our wedding. Right. We had a weird solution where we had two weddings. We had a wedding in North Carolina at my parents' backyard that was all family. Then we had a wedding in LA that was in our backyard that was pretty much all friends plus like yeah, our parents. Yeah, I'm going to be the wrong person to ask because I still look at people and I'm I'm in yeah. pain that I didn't ask them to the wedding and I really wanted to. Yeah. And it will haunt me for the rest of my life. Right. Yeah, that's like my biggest fear. <laughs> How big is the wedding? We're like estimating like 125 people. That's a good oh, size. Oh, that's a good size though. But but like the venue can hold a lot. It's just a matter of money. money. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say something, but this is the girl that has credit card problems. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, whatever. An extra 10 people. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I'm like, I really do look at people. Every time their Instagram story comes up, I'm like, fuck, I didn't invite them. And I feel fucking shit about it. Yeah. Maybe they don't care, <laughs> but like it, it hurts me. And then, but maybe it's cause I'm sensitive. Cause there's like many weddings I haven't been invited yeah. to and it hurts my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I know that's stupid and I should right. grow up, but it's just whatever. Sorry, this is who I am. Um, so I don't know my, we'll see what Miles thinks. Cause he's more practical, but mine is like, Hey, like new friends are actually really special. Cause they're like, Whoa, you invited me to my, you know, your, my wedding. That's like so sweet. And yeah. then, and then, but also maybe you don't need to, you know, they would also probably understand if you didn't, but I, right. I don't know. I, I think it's better if you can't to be like, Hey, just letting you know, I really value this friendship. I wanted to invite you to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we just, we just couldn't find the space if you decide not to. Some people think that's awkward, but as someone that hasn't been invited to weddings, I would have appreciated that. Another thing that we did, which was psycho, was that we decided we invited way more people than could the venue could fit our backyard. Don't say that because I still didn't invite people I wanted to invite. Oh, well, no, I, we, we still had people who were on the cutting room floor because we had to, but we like oversold it because we knew some people weren't going to be able to come. So then we evened it out to have and a lot of people couldn't come. By a the lot way. of people couldn't come. And then it was fine. So you can count on some people not coming. I also would 100%. recommend you do a two wave approach. First wave of invites and then you get no's second wave of invites. Yeah. And also, by the way, oh, that's, yeah. that's what we did. But also, by the way, people are going to drop out two weeks prior, one week prior, two days prior. Still mad about that. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, two days prior. That's, that, yeah, that's, Un unreal. That's, These yeah, unforgivable. <laughs> um, yeah. Forever. Unless will, it's like a family emergency. Oh, no, yeah, no they're, they're canceled. There were two people that also just didn't show up that I will never forget. Yeah, that was a little <laughs> tough. But it, yeah, you know, <laughs> weddings are complicated. I also like... I think it's like when you plan a wedding, you're like, this is such a big deal. And when you go to it, you're just like, oh, whatever. Like, I guess I don't care that I'm not invited. I don't know. You still probably have resentment over weddings you weren't invited to, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, so, sure. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. Absolutely. My high school friend that I haven't talked to in five years didn't invite me. I, you know, I, yeah. Hurts. I couldn't I believe it. I was just like, but I'm a ball at a wedding. Like, excuse me. But yeah. then once you once you do this position, it does make you a little nicer. You're like, I totally get it because it's so yeah. hard. It doesn't so mean you don't hard. love them any less or anything like that. Um, my yeah, opinion- the whole, the whole planning in itself is stressful. It's so hard. Yeah. My opinion is just like, whatever, if the venue can hold it, just do it. Oh my God. Weddings are crazy. It's the craziest thing. And by the way, we did it in like a bespoke kind of cool way where we did it in two backyards and it still was crazy expensive. Yeah. So I fully right. now, I know that weddings are fun, but that's also our vibe is like, we love to have parties for people. We love to do fun things with our friends. And I think not everyone right. is like that. So if you want to be, and also I'll also say this, we had some new invited people that were new friends that I'm like so glad that we invited. And I'm like, this is great. It's an investment in our friendship's future. Like those people yeah. are closer to us now because they were at our wedding, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think that like 
you know, if they're new friends that you really like and you vibe with that you're like, I can see us being friends for a long time. I think you got to go for the invite. And unless like they do something right. crazy, I don't look at anyone and I'm like, I <clears throat> wish I didn't invite them. Maybe yeah. one or two people. But. There's definitely one person that I wish that I didn't invite to my <laughs> yes. wedding. One person? Yeah. I think I'll there let the is audience one figure person. Out, I'll let the audience figure out who that person is. But Yeah, maybe there is one person. <laughs> maybe, there's, maybe there's one person I could think of that I wish uh, wasn't at my wedding. It's one person. But um, <laughs> yeah, so wedding <laughs> guest lists are complicated. <laughs> That's and, the tea. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, I'd say if they're new friends, uh, I would say definitely, uh, if you're like, I vibe with these people, there's like a couple new friends that we made too, that it was so close to the wedding that we like, we're like, oh shit. Like we're really close to these people now. And I wish they could have been at our wedding. I wish we said fuck it and just like, I know put an extra table. I'd be too. Like I, I kind of, I really, really do. I like it. It, it, like I could cry right now thinking about it, (laughs) but, um, (laughs) Also, I, right I do. I just like, I hate that we didn't invite certain people. I um, know, yeah. But well, I, I take, I take things very like personally. So if I didn't yeah, invite someone and they felt really bad, I would be upset for yeah, right. the rest of my yeah. life. But, yeah. But some <laughs> no, people, I've talked to some people and are like, oh, fuck it. Like, this is just how weddings go. Just like slash right. them out. Yeah. So like, this is me being sensitive, but some people will tell you like, <laughs> Who cares? Like, this is a wedding. This is how it goes. Like, don't worry about it. And that is also true. You yeah, know, you right. just, and some people argue that like, if you ha- a wedding too big, mm-hmm. then you won't be able to see some, a lot of people. My thing is like over 70 people, you're not going to see anyone. So who cares? Just, you know. Right. Yeah, I know. I get right. Too. Well, okay. we're, we're planning on doing like, or we've been thinking about doing like a whole like weekend kind of thing. Oh, I love that. Um, love. So that if we do have like a bunch of people, yes. we're able to see them on like Friday night. Oh, and, perfect. Like, yeah. Morning. Yeah. We did a Friday night thing, which was essential. I think the Friday night thing also, that is so the right move because it just getting it like the, if you can extend the experience, the, the longer, yeah. the better. And our Friday night thing was one of my favorite parts of the wedding. Yeah. Like the whole wedding weekend. Like we had a great Friday night thing yeah. at this bar and it was just like really fun. I got too drunk though. That was my only advice. We both got too drunk. I, I, <clears throat> I resotted the whole backyard two days before the wedding. Yeah. Don't recommend doing that. I no. was bruised for the wedding, oh, exhausted, yeah. so stupid. It was a crazy But time. it looked good. The grass was bad. And all of a sudden I panicked last minute. And we also were- we, made the, we were like, well, it's only like we had an estimate for some guy who was like, I can resell the whole thing for like this amount of money. And it was like, you know, a, kind of a lot of money, but uh, and we we're so low on budget. So Sarah was like, huh, I went down to the sod place and I can get that sod <laughs> a la carte. <laughs> For $290. It was $300. It was so like, psycho. Of me. And so Sarah, I mean, bought, Sarah I mean, bought all this on, put it in the back of a car. Not a which, truck. Not a truck. We just, had to do four different loads. Four. It was back and oh forth to the God. valley. It was so crazy. Our friends and family covered in dirt, just like bringing sod into the backyard. I, I, I think I lost five pounds like those two days. I like, couldn't fit into the dress because, and then I made my 71 year old mother carry up sods with these huge steps to our house. Yeah. I, carry up sod with me. It was, I was, I was a terror. So don't, don't do that. But yeah. I was trying to save money in crazy places. Yeah. Um, it so, was, uh, it was it, a wild time. Weddings are dumb and then great. And dumb, weddings are dumb, but it's also like, it was so fucking fun. And that I, uh, yeah. I, I think just like, enjoy it. Enjoy, enjoy the fun, have fun with it. I, I just recommend and Maybe this is me being an idiot, but like, eh, fuck it. I look back in the wedding. I'm like, I wish we got more. We spent more. <laughs> no. <laughs> We couldn't have. We I absolutely could could have have spent more. I wish there's like. I know you could. Well, have. I, I hear a lot of people who are like, "Well, I wish I would have spent a lot less." So it's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. I feel that way. Before. But yeah. Sarah doesn't. No, feel I was that. like, oh, like the flowers are. The, I, I, I yeah. would have spent like at least ten thousand more. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, <laughs> but uh, I would say go for it. If they're especially if they're really close friends that you're or new friends that you're just like tight with, I'd be like, yeah, invite them to. Yeah, the thing. I think it's fun. It's fun. Right. Um, well, anyway, uh, have a fantastic wedding. Yeah, uh, congratulations. Happy wedding. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, well, th- and thank you so much for calling in. You have a fantastic day. Thanks for picking up. You as well. Of All course. right. Okay, Thanks bye. so much. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Glad we didn't ask my mom that question. She would have said, don't have a wedding, go to Mexico yes, and that's elope. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Sarah, um, that brings us to the final segment of our show. Okay. A segment that we like to call Get Real. Okay. No, that music kicks me me like cry. I'm crying. I'm pregnant. You are Sarah has been crying at the funniest <laughs> moments recently. What was the other thing? Oh my god. A dog. The, the other day we were out with our sweet dog Birdie, and we we're sitting at a coffee shop for our anniversary, and this old woman came by 
and she she was petting Bernie, and she walked away, and Sarah just went, oh, and burst Bernie into complete tears. Bernie gave joy to her because Bernie doesn't care what your age is or who you are. I know. He's, He's a really everyone. good dog. He's I know, a good dog. That was a good one. But um, let's talk about, yeah, Bernie and our, our little family. Um, I, 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 yeah, I don't know if you want to just speak to that, but I feel like recently I've been feeling extra close to you. Yeah. And I think that, I think that actually a big thing, maybe this is also a piece of advice, but uh, we've been doing those late night check-ins. Yeah. And it's not that we, like, again, we were doing this sort of apropos of nothing, just being like, oh, we'd get into bed at the end of the night, we're both tired, put on a show, and then we kind of fall asleep. And recently, in the last like, couple of weeks, instead of going right to the show, we would just sort of be like, let's talk freeform about our day. And it just very like, oh yeah, let's just chat. And I found that it really like gave us both a lot of energy. Yeah, I, I like to do this thing. I don't know if you know I do this too. I like to, to talk to you on the pillow when you're on the pillow two inches away from your face. Yeah, it is really cute. <laughs> because I wanted to see every, I want to be that close to you and hear yeah. all of your day. And I think like it's nice to connect <laughs> with each other. You know, before, because life, you know, with a partner too, like yeah. it's just easy to be like, let's put on the show. And I'm a big TV watcher. I watch yeah, sure. massive amounts of television. Know, let's yeah. get real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's easy just to like, be like, you go to work, you talk, you check and you worry. Da, da, da. Yeah. And then we just were like, let's actually hang out. And I feel like we have been kind of maybe in our preparation of like, like yeah. before we're just going to be talking about like, poo-poo and diapers. Um, yeah, because it like, obviously, I think it's a good uh, pattern to get into because our life will get more complicated as we go. Yeah. But just having a little check-in to be like, how was your day today? Ooh, I had this for lunch. And like, yeah. uh, there's something that like, I talk to you all day, obviously. And then I get home and I talk to you, but I think there's something that nice that's nice about like, right before you go to sleep to yeah. like, have just a little, like, here are the details that we missed. And I don't, I don't want to lose that. No, I know? don't want to lose that either. And you know, when Miles and I first started dating, I um, I went to the eye doctor. Yeah. Because I I thought. Oh, this is very funny. Because I thought I I, I, I was seeing like I had like a blur in my eye or I, you know it was my eyes were strained my eyes were hurting. Yeah. And then it it was I realized because we were falling <laughs> in love so fast we were staring too closely we, at each other. Our faces were too close to each other and Sarah was like something's wrong with my eye. We now, were looking at each other too closely in the yeah. eyes. Yeah. Obviously, by the way, we're we're talking about very sweet details here. And you know what I wanted to, I've also been thinking about, should I hit the theme song again? Yeah. <laughs> I like Last it. Last time, third time is the charm. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, so performative relationships are in the news. Yeah. And, um, and the way that you, they are. The, the way that you uh, express your love to your partner yeah. publicly and stuff right. like that. Weird. And the, the, the way that you sort of are expressing your relationship and stuff like that. And I think I want to be clear that like, I, I love so many things about you. And I do think we have such a wonderful- But you hate a lot of things about I me I hate too. everything. No, <laughs> no, but I wanted to say like, we obviously, I don't know. I want to express to people that like, we have this wonderful thing and it is this sort of like lightning in a bottle. Yeah. But of course we get into fights. We, we have disagreements and stuff oh, like that. all the time. And I think that like, that's all part of the reason that I love you. And even in the fights and things like that, and even when we have arguments or disagreements or one of us is grumpy and then, you know, we're defensive about something. We're I, learning. We're and, learning. And like and we're, the, flawed, yeah. we're flawed humans from right. the start. Well, that sounded biblical. I, I just mean- We are flawed humans <laughs> from the start, honey. And if you just raise it up to Jesus, he is going to get you there. He is going to be able to get your flaws and he We're is going to iron those imperfect. out. We're perfect. No, I, I yeah. think, you know, I I love my parents, but they fall yeah. a lot. Sure. Um, and so I'm going to have things and sometimes I fall into those traps. Yeah, and like, right. I, I saw that like George Clooney or their relationship with his wife or whatever. Yeah, now yeah. they were like- We've never had a fight. And I was like, oh, I think that's what? strange to me, but I, we, well, fight yeah. all, we fight all, <coughs> hold on, all the time, Yeah, you know, which I, I would like to say like with the caveat, not all the time, no, but, sure, but like yeah. we, we, you know, we're both strong personalities. I would yeah. say we're both alphas. <laughs> what? Are you joking? Well, I, I, is alpha like a bad term now? I think now, yeah, alpha has been uh, like- Okay, uh, all right, it's a stupid term. by uh, weird guys on the internet. Okay, fine. But you know what I will say? What about alpha we're, females? We're, oh, <laughs> is that still okay? Now's the year of the alpha female. I'm fucking, I'm an alpha, that's right. No, I think like, 
hey, there's a lot of stuff I need to work on too. Oh, same. And you. And, and, and Definitely you. Definitely you yeah. though. So more... you, you have a lot to work on. <laughs> I think I think also though, uh, we are, um, one thing I love about us is that we <laughs> one are- One thing I love about us. If I may, we're <laughs> over sharers in some ways. Yeah. And that means that we are never bottling almost anything up. If I have something that I'm mm-hmm. like, I need to get off my chest to you, or if I have like, oh, I didn't like the way that this went down. Or if you have something that you're like, oh, this frustrated me, you yeah. know, whatever. We are discussing that in real time, almost yeah. always. Sometimes maybe too much so. But I do like that about us because I think it means that we want we want to communicate as much as possible. And I think that that helps facilitate sometimes like any, like we're never like res- building up a resentment that over months is then sort of coming out. I feel like we're able to discuss things very presently. And I, I think I yeah. really appreciate that about you. I have a list so high. Of no, you so much <laughs> Please don't say I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I can't hold anything in for two seconds. Yeah, no, it's same. And we're, that's, yeah. that's a blessing and a curse, but I we think We are it's- the same. And I know that <laughs> it's funny because like people say opposite tracks, whatever. In this case- no, two positive batteries, just two positive battery ends, just <laughs> meeting at the at the very. We middle. do the best we can. We but. do the best we can, but we are so hilariously similar that I think that that's also like yeah, we're of stubborn in fights. Yeah, I, I mean, we're both stubborn. I dated a lot of introverts before you, and yeah. I was like, I love that I'm the star. You know, like they're quiet and I'm loud, and isn't that cute? <laughs> And, <laughs> and also like I shine, you know, yeah. but, and then I, I'm glad I found an extrovert like you is that we both push each other up. I think so too. You know, we're yeah. both so self-involved and obsessed with ourselves. <laughs> we are both it's so, but I think it's also I like, like want to vomit now like myself I meet talk. you and I'm like, not only am I obsessed with myself, but I'm also obsessed with you. Wow. And with that, wow. What an episode. <laughs> I appreciate that. What I, a wild episode. We, we covered so much ground here. Yeah. Grief people fucking in a park. And um, I, <laughs> I mean, Sarah, and sometimes they go together. Citizens arresting my moaning neighbor. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, so uh, anyway, I love you, honey. And I uh, thank I you so much you for too. doing the show. Thank you for having me on. It was, a, thanks uh, for being know, the freelance I always get nervous sidekick this week. Before, or, or, I've, I get nervous before I come on. Really? What are you nervous about? Cause I'm, I'm a mover. I get that. You yeah. know, I'm, I, know that, so- I know that about you. <laughs> I like a stage where you can move and walk and talk, yeah, you know, it's yeah, hard yeah, just yeah, to yeah. sit. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, it's hard just to sit, sit and really just, and just talk. Yeah. And then I get nervous that, that, you know, I'm not delivering. No, you, you always deliver. Because baby. like, that's one thing about I, my baby. She always delivers. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for listening to perfect person. As always, you can follow the show at perfect person pod on Instagram for the recording schedule. So you can call in live. You can tweet about the show. You can listen on any podcast app and you can watch it on YouTube. Sarah, where can the people find you? Oh, um, usually I'm just at the grocery store nope. or at Pizzi <laughs> Bon on Instagram. <laughs> at Pizzi Bon on Instagram. And yeah. hopefully I'm going to do one one woman show in a month or two. Oh yeah, for sure. But depends if I, I'm getting pretty pregnant. So we'll see how much I have. You but are if not, an incredible performer. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love well, your one woman show and I ran tech for it. I was on the ones and twos. You were, you were always so, so supportive. Um, well, everybody uh, get, uh, you know, get out there and have a wonderful day. As, as Hannah Montana said, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs>